Local programming on KRWG Public Media made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. This is KRWG Public Media, TV, radio, online, news that matters. Now, across the Mesilla Valley and the borderland, the stories that shape our community. From the KRWG Broadcast Center at New Mexico State University, this is Newsmakers. Thank you for joining us on this special edition of Newsmakers. I'm Fred Martino. Our guest today for the entire half hour is the new president of New Mexico State University, Dr. John Floros. Dr. Floros, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. I want to begin with uh, your reflections on New Mexico State. You've had a chance to see the beginning of the semester. What is standing out for you? Oh, a lot of things. Uh, first, I, I'm, I'm just thrilled with the area. Las Cruces, it's, it's a beautiful town. Uh, the valley is, is gorgeous. The mountains are majestic, uh, just beautiful. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't have a desert experience before I came here, so this is my first desert experience, and it, and it really is fascinating. Um, the campus is beautiful. I've traveled quite a bit uh, around the country and, and different campuses, and they all have a characteristic. Uh, this campus is different. It has an architecture, it has a style, it has an attraction that kind of takes you into it. And, and to me, the first time I walked into that campus, I felt like this is a friendly place. This is a place where I would like to, to work. But really what, you know, now two and a half months into the job, I've had plenty of opportunity to meet with a lot of people, a lot of our faculty, a lot of our staff, a lot of our students. And it is really the people that make this, this place special. We have some, just the friendliest people, the most dedicated people, hardworking, full of ideas, full of dedication, and I just, I just love that. Well, we are thrilled that uh, you have a chance to talk a little bit about your vision and talking about the future of a New Mexico State. I know that a major priority is to increase recruitment and then also retention of students. Give me a sense of this challenge as you see it. This is a challenge that almost every university in the country has right now. Um, we're all competing for the same student. And in order to attract that student to come to your university, you have to put forth a lot of effort. Uh, and it doesn't stop there. Even when you attract the student and they come into the university, you have to put in the extra effort to retain them, to help them succeed, to help them graduate on time, and then hopefully to help them find a job, a profession, to be productive in, in society. You put all of that together and, and it becomes a very challenging thing. Uh, so it's not just recruiting the student, it's also retaining the student, helping them succeed, and, and really all the way out to where they have a job. Now, I've said this many times in, in other groups where I, I've talked, the students that are graduating today from a college like ours, uh, they will have to change professions on average about seven times in their career. In their 35 to 40 years career, they're gonna have to change seven times their profession. So the biggest challenge I think we have is to train the students to be prepared for that change. So there's a lot of things that we need to do right. A lot of things that our faculty need to do right. A lot of things our staff need to do right. A lot of things our students need to do right. So when I look at the challenge, it's really all of our challenge. We have to work together and we have to do a good job. It's, it's not just the recruiter's job to recruit. It's also the recruiter's job to help the student find their way around campus. It's not the advisor's job to just take somebody and advise them for one or two or three things, but it's really to connect all the dots, to bring down the silos and really make sure everybody understands that the reason we're here is to help those, those students succeed, I almost said kids, it's to help those students succeed and to really help our faculty do their job better because it takes all of us. And, and by us, I mean administrators, supporters, staff, 
Uh, everybody needs to help our students and our faculty. And, and that's not a very easy thing to do. It, it takes a lot of effort and, and a culture that we need to create. Yeah, so give me an idea in terms of that retention piece. I think uh, recruitment is done in a variety of ways, and we'll get right. into some of that in, in a moment. But with retention, uh, what are some specific things that you see as ways to help students uh, once they start freshman year to stay here right. and then finish their degree? Because as you pointed out, this is not a new problem. This right. is a problem all over the nation that for, for since college began, <laughs> that, that students have trouble uh, many students have trouble finishing their degrees. Yes, that, that is correct. And, and the, the issues our students face today, they're not exactly the same the students faced five years ago right. or 10 years ago. Things keep continuing to change. But when you analyze the data, and, and we're in the process of analyzing the data right now, there's a lot of different groups of students. They're not all the same. Some of them will have issues that are financial in nature. So they will need some sort of help to, to succeed financial in nature. Mm -hmm. Some students may have, may have family problems. You know, somebody in their family has an issue and they have to, to take care of that. Uh, we have to figure out ways to help them. Some students will have academic pro, uh, problems and, and that's something that happens fairly often, particularly because our K through 12 education system doesn't quite prepare our students as well as they should. So there's a lot of different groups of students and they all have different needs but we have to address all of those. If we are to really keep those students here for the second semester, the second year, the third year, we have to figure out how to, to help every single one of those students. And they're all different. Okay, getting to uh, retention, uh, as you know, there was some uh, controversy about an increase in scholarships mm -hmm. in order to boost enrollment. Give me your thoughts on this. Well, again, uh, this is not a, uh, a thing that's new. A lot of universities are looking into creative solutions to, to get more students, to get more students to come, to stay, and so on and so forth, the retention that we were talking about earlier. So it, it, it's not surprising that NMSU put forward a plan to attract more students to come, and, and one of part of that plan was to, to provide more scholarships if you meet these criteria we will provide a scholarship to you. Mm -hmm. so that's not an issue, that was, that was really a good thing to do. The problem came where probably some of the assumptions that were made or some of the, the decisions that were made at the point where we had to, to provide more money than we could afford or, or we had planned for, really. If we had planned better, we probably wouldn't be in this position. Uh, if we had a model that predicts you know, how many scholarships we'll have to give, how many students will come, uh, we will probably have budgeted for that ahead of time and th that issue wouldn't be there. But I do want to say, you know, we're, you know, we have a shortfall of about $3.4 million. It sounds like a lot of money and it is a lot of money, but the bottom line is that in the bigger scheme of things, we'll figure out ways to, to cover that. Uh, we may delay some things in terms of strategic initiatives. We may have to, to do certain things differently than what we, we were planning to do. But we will figure out a way to do that so that our students that are already here, they don't have to, to do anything but count on those scholarships. Okay, on a related issue, uh, some folks, as you know, including some regents, have expressed concern uh, about tuition increases. And the uh, regents have even rejected some tuition increase requests over time. Uh, this is also not a new thing, and it's not unique to New Mexico State University. Uh, but critics say that, uh, you know, look, NMSU has one of the lowest tuition rates in the country. And the fact is that you, you have to increase tuition in order to remain uh, competitive because there are expenses involved in, right. in making sure faculty and staff salaries stay up with inflation, et cetera. Your thoughts on this? Uh, th this is actually a, a, both a simple and a complicated issue. Mm -hmm. um, if you assume that the student you're trying to attract is financially well off or the family, then increasing tuition is, is the right thing to do because universities today have a lot of different expenses. 
uh, faculty, staff, uh, obligations of all kinds of things, renewing their infrastructure, buildings, roads, and so on and so forth. So, uh, yes, increasing tuition is, is one way to get increased resources into the university. But I think we have to truly understand who is our customer, who is the student we're trying to attract. We live in, in the poorest state in the union. And when you look at that and, and you try to understand the students we're trying to attract to this university, and you take into account that more than half of our students are, are of Hispanic origin. Uh, many of our students are the, the first ones to go to college in their families. All of a sudden, the picture is not as clear. Uh, yes, we are very affordable. There's no question about it. When you look at our tuition and fees and you compare us to a lot of other universities in this area and beyond, we compete very well. We have fairly low tuition. Uh, and, and I'm not against raising tuition if we did it uh, in a way that still allow students that cannot afford the college to come to college. And, and scholarships is one of, one of the ways to do that. Uh, but there are a lot of other ways to actually improve the financial situation of the university. For example, productivity, efficiency. Um, I came from an institution that for the last 10 years they had to cut their budget just like we have to cut our budget here. Uh, and even though we had cut our budget and even though with the tuition increases we didn't manage to bring in additional resources, we managed to to find additional resources from within by improving our productivity, by improving our efficiency. Uh, if you look at, for example, right now, New Mexico State University, the student to faculty ratio, it's somewhere between 15 to 16. Uh, in most other universities that we compete with, that ratio will be 20, 22, 25. Now, that's not across the board, obviously, but there are ways for us to find out how we can improve our own operations so that we have additional resources to give raises, to pay faculty more, to pay staff more, without necessarily increasing tuition. Having said that, I'm going to come back to, to the original thought that we are a very affordable institution. Our tuition is probably as low as, as any of the institutions, and in that respect, uh, you know, we, we have to, to be very cognizant of that. And we have to understand that if we're going to retain some of the best faculty, if, we're, if we are going to retain some of the best staff and increase our productivity, we need to pay them well. And increasing tuition may be one of our choices. Okay. Um, you are credited with uh, one way to be able to uh, keep things going well budget in a, in a budget sense, um, with a lot of fundraising success in your role as the Dean of the College of Agriculture at Kansas State. Um, give us a sense of, of NMSU as a comparison and your goals in regard to, to fundraising, because of course, as you yeah. point out very well, if you aren't going to I increase tuition, which is one of the the, the biggest revenue sources, there has to be another way, and fundraising is one of those ways. Absolutely. A and fundraising has become increasingly more important for ju not just NMSU, but all public universities. Uh, if you compare public universities with the private universities, you know, the Harvards and the Ivy Leagues and so on and so forth, we, we are very late coming into the fundraising realization. Uh, the Harvards and the Yales and the Stanfords, they have been raising money for a long, long time and they have some huge amounts of money in their endowments so they can actually have an additional income. In our case, we don't have those huge endowments so we have to double up our efforts in raising money right now. Now fundraising, again, it's, it's, a, uh, it's an art and a science, I think. And, and you really have to approach people because most of the money will come from individuals, will come from donors that are, were either alumni of, of the university or they have some affinity, some connection, some friendship to the university. You have to really touch those people in a way that it will let them know that their investment will go into good use, that there will be a return to that investment. And every one of those people that we talk to, it's very different. Uh, and, and we have to put forth a choice 
or several choices, not just one, for these people to, to really un tell us where they want to be. Uh, it's critical to listen for us, for, for the fundraisers, for the, our foundation, for our leadership, to listen to what the individuals want to do and, and where they want to invest their money. And once we did that well, I think there's a lot of people that will be more than glad, more than willing to support the university because our cause is very noble. But we have to figure out what the individual wants to do first and foremost. If you, for example, are interested in supporting athletics, I can't come to you try to get money for NPR. But if you are interested in NPR, that's what we need to, to talk about. Somebody else may be interested in funding scholarships for not so well off students. Somebody else may be interested in scholarships for academically very gifted students. So we have to figure out what it is that we want to do and what it is that the individual is willing to support. And if we did that well, I think we will be able to, to, to really raise a significant amount of money to support our students, to support our faculty, to support all kinds of operations. Okay, well, uh, another funding mechanism is very different uh, at New Mexico State University, and this, of course, is for capital work. It involves uh, general obligation bonds, which will be on the November ballot. Uh, give us an update on how the bonds that folks will see when they go to vote uh, in November or in early voting before November uh, will help NMSU if those are approved by, by voters. Right. So uh, let me talk about the mechanics first, and then I'll explain how those bonds mm -hmm. will help us. First of all, uh, the, the GEO bond uh, will be on the ballot, and it's, I think, one of the last things on the ballot, uh, and it's a yes or no, and, and we would like to encourage people to, to vote yes. Uh, if the bond is not approved, uh, the taxes are not going to go down. If the bond is approved, the taxes are not going to go up. The yes and no is really to limit how that money is going to be used. And in, in this particular case, it's going to be limited to supporting all the institutions throughout the state to help with infrastructure costs in, in one way or another. This particular year, New Mexico State University, we have the lion's share of, of that money. Uh, all over our state, for all campuses, we're, gonna, we're uh, asking for 32, $32.5 million dollars just for Las Cruces, it's going to be, I believe, about 25 or 26 million dollars. The bottom line is, most of that it will go to build three separate buildings. One of them, one of the, the buildings, has to do with agriculture, animal agriculture in particular. Uh, it's going to be a feed mill. It will give us the ability to to do work that we can't do today. Uh, nutrition of of uh, feed, for example, and, and nutrition for animals. Uh, animal agriculture is big in New Mexico. So we need to, to have the tools to support that industry. The second uh, building that we're gonna build has to do with adding value to raw materials that we collect from our farms and our ranches. So that's a food science and food safety related building. Your field, uh, food That's science. my field, yeah. that's, that's correct. <laughs> but that's not why, that was yeah, there yeah. before I came. Right, right, right. But, but that's the second building, which really will help the state add value to the products we already produce. Instead of shipping the raw material elsewhere, getting somebody else to do the work, and then we're buying it back at three, four, five times the price, we need to do some of that right here in New Mexico. The third building is a biomedical uh, related building, and it will connect a lot of the things that we do in, in agriculture, in food, and nutrition, with human health, and a lot of diseases, disease related factors, so when you look at the three buildings we're going to build, uh, it's ag-related, it's food and nutrition related, it's basic science and biomedical science related, it will give us the opportunity to really increase our research, increase our education, and increase our outreach out to the industry, which is the three major goals you know, we have, the Chancellor and I, for the university as we move forward. Okay, very exciting stuff. Well, we talked a lot about no, uh, money, uh, I want to go beyond the budget picture now, what do you see uh, beyond the budget picture as the number one challenge for NMSU and why? Well, um, we have a fairly old infrastructure. 
there's a lot of challenges with wages and salaries. Uh, there's a lot of issues that pertain to you know, how we do our business on a daily basis. But I really think that the biggest issue we have is to figure out how to help our students succeed. Right now, um, many of our students, they don't actually graduate. I would like to change that. I would like to be able to, if you come to NMSU and you stick with it, we will help you graduate and we will help you succeed in life. Coming to college is imperative to success in life, I think. And we have to figure out a way to help all of our students succeed. For that to happen, we have to maintain a fairly high research enterprise so that our students can have some hands-on experience in our laboratories, in our research farms, in all sorts of areas where if we don't have the research component, you know, we're not going to be able to expose them to. This is a good example. You know, we have a lot of our students coming into the studios to, to, to work. That's the kind of hands-on experience I would like to provide for all of our students. Because the more of that we do, the more successful the student will become. Yeah. I also would like to connect the university with the industry and the outside world in a way that we haven't managed to connect before. Because again, if we have that connection, our students will benefit because they can have summer jobs, they can have experiences that they wouldn't have otherwise. Our faculty will benefit because they might get support from the private sector to do research and to do work. Uh, and the university will benefit because we will be able to place more students. Our reputation will go up. People out in the community, in the state, in the region, will pay attention to, to NMSU. Okay, you may have already uh, answered this question uh, in my question about the number one challenge. What do you see as the number one opportunity? Are they really one and the same? Uh, well, I think our opportunity lies in our mission. We're a land-grant institution. Mm -hmm. And as, as a land-grant institution, we're very uniquely situated to take advantage of a lot of the issues that are out there to help communities solve those issues, to help the region solve those issues, to help the country and the world really attack some major challenges that we have uh, today. So you're saying part of this is, you know, educating students so that they finish a degree, but it goes beyond that, that there's also the larger picture in the land-grant institution of also uh, helping the community. Th that's exactly right. Okay. I mean, we, we, we have, as a land-grant institution, we are prepared to provide the talent, that's our students, mm -hmm. to provide innovation, that's our research component, and to really take information out to the people that can use it. Be that the private industry, be that a community here, be that you know, the, the, the uh, border uh, issues that we're facing. We, are, we have the system in place to take that information out to the people. We have an extension system, we have an outreach enterprise that can really help people all throughout the state. So being a line grant institution, in my mind, is one of the largest opportunities we have. We're the only one in the state. The other, uh, I think, opportunity we have is the Hispanic Serving Institution designation that we have. And again, this is something that it's extremely important, I think, to us as an institution. Try to capitalize on the fact that we can take Hispanic minorities or many other minorities and help those students succeed. Okay, believe it or not, I only have a few minutes left and I don't want to short uh, your time anymore in talking about your restructuring plan in order to achieve all of these goals, give you a chance to talk a little more about that. Right, so when the Chancellor and I we came in, uh, obviously we had to, to restructure to one position into two, uh, but it really goes m far beyond that. Uh, in order for us to to really uh, materialize and, and help our objectives uh, uh, move forward, we had to truly look at students and, and ask questions like, how can we possibly help our students succeed and in what respect and, and what structure will support that? 
And one of the very first uh, messages that, that we got, and one of the very first messages that we knew uh, it was it became very clear it was the fact that we needed to to really bring together a lot of different activities that are not together right now uh, for example if we're going to advertise and market ourselves to a, a number of um, markets out there uh, and our marketing group does very well in marketing NMSU out there then the enrollment people need to follow that so that they can be in the same markets and and rip the benefits of that marketing if that if that, those two groups don't communicate, we're probably not going to see the benefit. Uh, same, same issues with the enrollment as we move forward and we bring those students here. How do we retain those students here? Again, if those two groups, the enrollment group and the mentoring and advising group and all the way to the academic unit, the faculty, if all of that doesn't work together, and, and that includes housing, includes all sorts of other things that we must put together. And that's, that was one of the changes we made. It, it was the change of putting together all those units for student success. The second part has to do with our research. Uh, our, our graduate programs and, and our graduate school was separate from, from research. And in many universities, those two are together. So that was the second structural change we made. We took the graduate school and we put it together with the Vice President for Research, so those two offices are now under one leadership. And then we have a, a, a number of other changes that uh, I believe that will be very beneficial to, to the university. For example, we will have a diversity officer that's gonna lead all of our diversity and inclusion efforts. We are a minority serving institution. We need to have a very visible uh, diversity related activity and that individual will, will do that. Uh, the other part that I wanted to, to really emphasize is our long distance online education. We have some programs today, we, we have some effort in that area, uh, but it's a huge opportunity for growth and, and we need somebody to lead that effort. So we will have an online uh, education effort that somebody's gonna lead. Okay, lots of exciting plans and uh, we look forward to visiting you uh, again and having more updates as time goes on and wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you so much, Dr. John Floros, the president of New Mexico State University. That is our time for now. Join us this week on KRWG Radio every weekday. It's morning edition 5 to 9, fresh air at 11, followed by here and now, noon to 2, and all things considered 4 to 7. KRWG News is always online at krwg.org. And we'd love to hear from you. Email us with your story ideas and video submissions. The address is feedback at nmsu.edu. For all of us at KRWG News, I'm Fred Martino. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on Newsmakers.